Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. Today I just want to cover some basics about taking the part 107 here in 2022. I just took the test today and passed with the 88%. I consider that pretty good being that about two weeks ago I knew basically nothing about flying drones or any type of flight rules, METAR reports, sectional charts, anything like that. Um, so I, I basically just want to keep this short so you guys have more time to study for your own test but I just want to give you some beneficial information about what to expect, what kind of questions you might run into in the test and also just kind of what I use for study guides. I didn't buy any course or anything. I did this all for free just in my own time. I spent maybe about 10 hours or so studying over the last week and a half two weeks, somewhere in there. Um, I just kind of watch a little video here and there and take some notes. I just kind of kept a, you know, like a notepad handy and anything I felt was important that I wouldn't remember, I would just kind of write down and I'd kind of review that before the test. So let's get started. Um, the test itself is 60 questions, multiple choice, uh, three answers per question. So, I mean, your odds are pretty good there already. Usually one of the answers is pretty uh, out of whack. So um, you can just about narrow every question down to about two answers if you have a basic idea of what's going on. Uh, you get two hours for the test. I used about 50 minutes and that included some time I spent just kind of reviewing everything and going back and making sure everything was good. Um, you can bookmark certain questions and go back and review those later which I think I had about five that I ended up bookmarking just because they seem like they kind of had two answers and I really wasn't sure, so I just kind of went back and forth and kind of went over those. My test uh, consisted a lot on the sectional charts, which I was surprised. Um, a lot of people said it was more like weather and stuff like that. I mean, those are in there, but my test was definitely heavy on the sectional charts, so I can't stress enough to know everything you can about sectional charts. I've probably watched three or four videos on sectional charts alone just because I never knew anything about them and they are kind of overwhelming at first but once you learn the basics you can definitely navigate yourself through the sectional charts. Um, another thing worth noting is before you can actually apply to take your test through like a PSI facility, you actually need to go through the FAA website to receive a tracking number and that's what you'll use when you go to apply for a testing date and time through the PSI testing facility website. Um, another thing worth noting is once you do pass your test and you get your certificate it'll take approximately 10 days for them to go through and do your background check and everything before you're able to go back on and print out your temporary certificate until you receive yours in the mail. As far as the testing goes like I said before a lot of my questions were sectional charts um, you need to know how to read METAR and TAF weather reports. Um, they are pretty confusing at first. When I seen one a week ago, I was like, what are all those numbers? But within just a few days of just watching a couple of videos about them and going through them, they're like, no problem now. I mean, I'm obviously not like a super professional pilot, but I could definitely read on the METAR and TAF reports now. Um, weather, you need to know about stable and unstable air. I had questions about the different cloud types, uh, cumulus, 
Nimbus, uh, Stratus, that kind of stuff. Um, airspace was also a major one. Um, you need to know your classes at airspace, how they are categorized on the sectional charts, and you also need to know about communication frequencies to towers and airports and where to tune into for weather reports and everything via the radio. Um, you should also brush up on the new rules regarding the flying at night and over people. They've made some recent changes in the last year or so um, about flying at night and everything. And also the remote ID you should know the basics of. Basically it's just a transmitter that broadcasts uh, the location of your remote station and the drone itself. Um, that's just to kind of keep everybody safe here in the future and it'll allow us to do more things like the night flight and different things like that. Um, the main study guides I used for the test were the Tony Northrup video. He's got a good video on the part 107. Um, I'll link all these below the video so you guys can find them yourself. Uh, my favorite one was the drone coach. He's got uh, like a 12 series video part on YouTube and I would just kind of play it in high speed, you know, times 1.5 or whatever and just go through those and take some notes about things I thought were important. And then I kind of just use that as my study guide. Um, that was definitely, he covers everything in depth and it's just easy. Um, you can just do one section and take a break or whatever. And then at the end of the video, he has some sample questions you go over and he'll give you the answer, which is nice. So there's no doubt about whether you're getting the right answer or not. Uh, another key thing would be to just go on Google or whatever and take some practice tests you can find. That'll kind of uh, give you an idea where you're at and how you are taking in the information and basically what you need to study more on. So that's also a key thing. Um, that's really about it. I mean, I'm not going to drag this on forever, but uh, yeah, there's there's definitely a lot to know. And I think if you just take some time and just cram in that information, you'll be fine. Um, there was a few questions on actual rules, like how many feet above ground level you should fly, uh, how many feet you're allowed over towers and different stuff like that. Um, I thought I would get more of those, but I actually only got a few about the actual rules and I'm serious, like probably like, it seemed like 50% of the test was on sectional charts alone. So just so you're aware of that. And that's really about it guys. Um, good luck and take care and we'll see you in the next one.